so next we will see about the measles virus so in the measles virus we have first we have to first see the entry how does this measles virus gets entry in the body of a child then the pathogenesis then clinical features and then we will see the lab diagnosis and some vaccines which are against this measles virus infection so coming to the first thing that is the entry part so how does that measles virus enter into the body of a child so entry of the measles virus occurs via the droplet into the respiratory route so where it has to enter it has to enter in the respiratory route and that occurs via the droplets so the pathogenesis is similar to the varicella zoster virus if you haven't seen my lecture on the varicella zoster virus you can see in the playlist of uh, uh, virology for prof exams okay in that uh, playlist i have included this lecture on the varicella zoster virus you can watch it there and then you will know about the pathogenesis of the varicella zoster virus the pathology of the pathogenesis of the measles virus is also similar to that only next what we talk about is the clinical features so in the clinical features we have three stages that is the prodromal stage the eruptive stage and the post measles stage so prodromal stage uh, is uh, is the stage of fever that is seen on the 10th day so in the prodromal stage the first stage which is so in that prodromal stage we see fever at on the 10th day after the entry of the virus into the body plus there is also one most important spot seen that is called as the coplex spots and that coplex spots are the most characteristic of the measles virus okay and what is that coplex spot coplex spot is a white spot which is surrounded by erythema on the buccal mucosa near the lower second molar tooth these all of the points are very important from mcq point of view that they are uh, the coplex spots are seen only in the against the only in the uh, buccal mucosa against the lower second molar tooth so this is a very important point this should be remembered because the coplex spots are very characteristic of the measles next stage is the eruptive stage so in the eruptive stage we find to see the maculopapular rashes in the eruptive stage there is maculopapular rashes and these rashes appear on the 14th day that is uh, on the fourth day after the fever the maculopapular rashes are seen and these rashes are very characteristic as characteristic as they appear first behind the ear and then on the trunk and the extremities so uh, unlike the uh, the chicken pox and the small pox these uh, rashes appear first behind the ear and then on the trunk and the extremities then the next stage is the post measles stage in the post measles stage there occurs weight loss and weaknesses and one more most important point in the post measles stage is the deformation of the skin that is the most characteristic uh, of that is also a very uh, important characteristic finding that is seen in the measles infection so if there is deformation of the rashes then uh, we can uh, we can conclude that the child was suffering from the measles okay because it uh, days commit only after the uh, subsidence of the measles infection that's why we can see retrogradely we can diagnose that the child was suffering from measles okay so i have not included that here but you can include that here that it is the deformation of the skin which is also a very important characteristic with the measles virus infection then the point then the next topic uh, or the next point that we we are going to see is the complications so complications are the secondary bacterial infection you know that in any viral infection there is decrease in the immunity and that's why the infection by the bacteria becomes very easy that's why here also secondary bacterial infections are very easy after the measles infection and that's why the secondary bacterial infection is seen there okay then the next is the cns complications so in the cns complications there is in cephalomyelitis 
encephalomyelitis and most important is the subacute sclerosing panencephalitis in short which is known as SSPE that is the very rare condition which is seen after the measles infection very very rare condition but it is the very detrimental condition that means if this occurs then death is very you know after this condition death is very common but this condition generally do not occur once it occurs then death is um, that can occur very easily okay so this SSPE then develops if the measles occurs to children less than two years of age and it is characterized by seizures and deterioration of the motor functions and then next comes the lab diagnosis how will you diagnose the measles infection so for the diagnosis of the lab, uh, measles infection we have to first collect the specimen so a specimen that we collect is the nasopharyngeal swab and the blood plus we have to collect the and uh, we have to detect the antigen from those collected specimens so those antigens can be detected using the antibody and by that we can diagnose the measles infection other than that we can also do virus isolation and for virus isolation we have uh, learned it from the general virology that viral culture needs a uh, cell line so the cell line which is used for measles virus uh, isolation is the human kidney cell line that is the preferred cell line and detection is by the cytopathology and that uh, cytopathology reveals multinucleated giant cells which are called as the parthen pinkel d cells this is a very important again this this uh, giant cell is a very important mcq okay so the mcq will be like which is the giant cell which is seen in the measles virus infection so that is the warthin pinkel d cells okay these are having both intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies so generally there is presence of either intracytoplasmic or intranuclear uh, inclusion bodies but in case of missiles infection both type of inclusion bodies are seen plus we can also diagnose the measles infection by antibody detection so by the antibody detection also this uh, virus can be diagnosed I mean this infection can be diagnosed and the antibodies used are the IgG and IgM antibodies are detected in the serum and this detection is by ELISA by using the recombinant measles nucleoprotein antigen you can remember or remember it or you can leave it it is not that important okay so it is the NP antigen by which these antibodies are detected now for diagnosis of SSPE detection of antibody in CSF is diagnostic so if you uh, if we have to diagnose the SSPE then we must have to de detect the antibody in this CSF if we cannot find the antibody in the CSF then we cannot say that it is a case of subacute sclerosing panencephalitis that means for the uh, for labeling a baby to be suffering from SSPE we have to uh, show that the there was there were antibodies in the CSF okay and then we have the molecular method at last but not the least that is uh, that uses the RT-PCR method for detection of the genes of the virus and by that we can diagnose the in measles virus infection then we also have the vaccines okay vaccines are for prevention of the measles infection that is the MMR and the MR vaccine you will read about these vaccines in the PSM once you enter into the third year okay this there is very detailed uh, about these vaccines there okay which are included in the national immunization schedule 2020 so this is all about the measles virus and this is why it's infected. These are all the important points that you have to remember for your exam purposes. That's all for measles.